Morning, everyone. It's Sunday morning. Glenn Kellaway from the basement back with my final installment ranking the 60s, 1969. What a friggin' year. I was 16 years old and loving life. I got to tell you, everything was just coming together. What a magical year it was. Uh, so many concerts. Uh, the biggest ones I saw. Who uh, would have been the first one? Jimi Hendrix in May of 1969 at Maple Leaf Gardens. Blind Faith, Delaney and Bonnie and Taste at Varsity Stadium in July of that year. Oh my God, what a show that was. A couple of weeks later, seeing Grand Funk open for what was supposed to be Sly and the Family Stone, who pulled the no-show, and Delaney and Bonnie again, who were just an amazing live act, one of my favorite bands from back then. Um, how did I not pull a Delaney and Bonnie album for this, uh, shame on me. Anyway, Grand Funk, this was before the Red album came out. I mean, and, uh, they were like an unknown band to me anyway, and just were mind blowing good. Fantastic. I still vividly remember their performance. Uh, Led Zeppelin, November of that year. I uh, I don't know. There's a few others. They're the they were the biggest ones. Great year and the music that came out that year. My lord, let's go over it. I pulled 27 albums. I could have pulled 2,700 albums. So my apologies if your favorites aren't on there. Please uh, slap me in the back of the head in the comments and say you forgot this one. You forgot that one. You forgot this one. I'm sure I forgot a ton of them. So uh, let's start off. Grateful Dead comes out with uh, a palindrome, a, I can never say this word, a oxomoxoa, a oxomoxoa. Grateful Dead has some real staples on this one. St. Stephen uh, doing that rag, China Cat Sunflower, one of my favorite Dead songs, Cosmic Charlie. Uh, the 11 Jam, these were all songs that were uh, part of the live shows for years to come. Um, I didn't own this album at the time because I wasn't a deadhead at the time, but uh, it's a great album. i got to make note of it. So Grateful Dead, number 27. Number 26, Joe Cocker. With a little help from my friends. What a great frickin' album this was coming out of nowhere. Uh, probably the best Beatles cover ever. And uh, what a band. The people who played on this album. Jimmy Page, Stevie One, or Stevie Winwood, I'm sorry. Uh, Matthew Fisher. Uh, Chris Stanton. Henry McCulloch. I mean, just fantastic. He does an incredible version of Dave Mason's Feeling All Right, which is a great track. Um, Just Like a Woman, the Bob Dylan cover. Um, Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood. Little Help from My Friends, I Shall Be Released. I mean, this was a great freaking album and still is a great album. Number 26. Number 25 on the list would be The Kinks. Again, I wasn't a Kinks album guy at the time. I was a Kinks single guy at the time. But looking back, what a great album this is. I think this is a favorite amongst Kings fans. Arthur, fantastic. Victoria was a hit off of this. But just a really cool, cool album. Uh, The Kinks, amazing. Number 25 on the list. That was Arthur. Number 24 on the list would be... Leonard Cohen's Song from a Room. Man, this album has special meaning to me. Um, between this and another album came in out, I had a, a, uh, a, an evening, uh, I can say, it was, uh, I was bathing at Baxter's. And um, it's a long story, but this album brought me back down to earth that night at a friend's place and he kind of saved my me from going insane with this album so uh songs from a room has special meaning to me great great record bird on a wire is on this album 
uh, Lady Midnight, um, this, uh, every song's great on this, Soul on Marianne, excellent record from Leonard Cohen, his second album. Okay, uh, 23 on the list, getting into some vinyl now, my girl Janice, I love this woman, this was her first day, uh, solo album after breaking up with Big Brother, soulful r&b she was going after a sound like otis redding had she loved otis and she came in with the horns this has got try a little harder on it which is a great opening track maybe um and janice's greatest vocal performance ever i think is little girl blue what a beautiful beautiful song this is a great great record uh love janice okay that was, uh, it's hard to remember how, what number I'm at here. Where the heck I lost her? Cosmic Blues, I can't even find it on the list now. Number 23, number 22 on the list, Jethro Tull. Again, I hadn't bought any Jethro Tull albums until Aqualung, but I was a fan. And for some reason, wasn't picking up the albums. But Stand Up is a freaking great record. This is probably my third favorite Tall album after Aqualung and Minstrel in the Gallery. Um, New Day Yesterday's on here. Uh, Nothing is Easy. Fat Man. Living in the Past. Oh, no, I think that's Associated Recordings. Anyway great freaking record these box sets are amazing if you don't own any of them pick them up if you can okay jethro tall that was 22 number 21 let's go with some soul this was pretty freaky stuff in 1969 hot buttered soul my buddy alex i mentioned the other day that he kind of re uh reintroduced this album to me hadn't listened to it for years but trippy soul music uh songs that are like 12 minutes long isaac was just incredible back then hot buttered soul okay number 20 now we're getting into the top 20 let's go with quicksilver messenger service i love this band and love this album happy trails did a whole kind of a theme of the song, Who Do You Love? They did, Who Do You Love? Where Do You Love? Why Do You Love? What Do You Love? When Do You Love? Da, 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 love. It's great. Great freaking album. Uh, great just reeks of 60s San Francisco psychedelic stuff. Excellent stuff. Okay, number 19 on the list would be... I mentioned to you about bathing at Baxter's, walking along Young Street, totally out of it, in front of this head shop on Young Street called Media One Stop. They got speakers outside and they're blasting some blues music. We don't know what it is, but the next day we kind of go, geez, I wonder what they were playing that night. It was so incredible. And we went back to the store and said, you were playing a blues album last night. What was it? And it was Muddy Waters fathers and sons probably my second favorite blues album of all time behind uh johnny winner's progressive blues experiment this is muddy waters passing the torch to all the white dudes like mike bloomfield and paul butterfield um it's uh, look at that cover it's just great and uh this is uh the first album it's a double album the first album is studio the second album is live um there's a lineup of musicians on there if you like the blues and you don't own this album shame on you it is incredible on the chess label fantastic record oh man it just means so much to me this album brings back so many memories okay number 18 again i was talking about seeing grand funk and this album hadn't come out doesn't come out until i saw them in july or early august and this album did not come out, I don't believe, until like November of that year. But uh, the best Grand Funk album, in my opinion, with Paranoid and Inside looking out on it. Um, boy, did they rock back then. Larry's going to be proud of me for that one. 
Number 17. These albums now, like, you're going to be saying to me, how does that rank so low? Tommy, The Who. Pete Townsend. What a freaking genius. This is incredible. Tommy. Unbelievable. I think this was 69. Don't don't slap me and say it was 68 because I'm thinking it was 69. But anyway, Tommy. Fantastic record. Great concept album. Need I say more about Tommy? Number 16 on the list. Do, 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 do. Crosby, Stills, and Nash, the super group. Stephen Stills from Buffalo Springfield. David Crosby from the Birds. Graham Nash from the Hollies. Their harmonies. Sweet Judy Blue Eyes. What a masterpiece of an album this is. How can this only be number 16? Great frickin' record. Oh, number 15 on the list. Let's get back to some more soul. Sly and the Family Stone. Man, I wish they hadn't have pulled a no-show. I never got to see them. Um, I just finished Sly's book. Uh, I wish it would have been a bit... Uh, my friend Steve at All the Worlds of Stage said it should have been more salacious. Bingo. Uh, it was just missing a lot of detail. Uh, but interesting book nonetheless. And thank you, Steve, for gifting it to me. Stand. Sly and the Family Stone, my favorite Sly album. Brilliant. Sex Machine. Oh, my God. I could listen to that all freaking day. Everyday People's on here. You can make it if you try. Uh, Want to take you higher, sing a simple song. All classics. Epic Label. Okay. Let's not forget Woodstock happened in 1969 in August of that year. And when I was at the Blind Faith concert, they were handing out flyers for Woodstock at the end of the show. People were handing out for this festival. We're looking at the lineup going, wow, is that ever cool? And it turned out to be Woodstock. Who knew? Okay. Uh, where did I leave off here? 15. Number 14 on the list is Creedence Clearwater Revival, my favorite CCR album, Bayou Country, Graveyard Train, Keep on Chuglin, the title track, uh, well, I guess there's no title track. Born on the Bayou, uh, Good Golly Miss Molly, Penthouse Popper, Proud Mary. Uh, man, I mean, just incredible record. John Fogarty, man, he just rocked it. Number 13, Blind Faith. Jeez, I'll never forget that concert. It was just so amazing. Musically, it was just brilliant. Such a beautiful summer night. Oh, outdoors what a show blind faith only one album what a shame had to cry today can't find my way home presence of the lord see a joy do what you like wow ginger baker steve winwood eric clapton rick gretch super group super super group number 12 on the list we got to get us some zeppelin this album came out either the week before or the week after I saw them in November uh, 2nd of that year. Um, incredible. Incredible show. Another show that I'll never forget. In a small place, too. 2,500 people. Amazing. Zeppelin 2. So ne number 11 on the list. Neil Young. Oh, everybody knows this is nowhere. Man, what a great frickin' record. I played this thing until I wore it out. Great album from Neil. Probably my third best Neil album behind On the Beach and Tonight's the Night. Great record. Cowgirl in the Sand. Oh. Okay, number 10, the top 10, Rolling Stones. Why don't I own this album on vinyl? I ask myself every frickin' day. Let it bleed, Rolling Stones. Great frickin' record. Man, oh man, the song Let It Bleed. Midnight Rambler. Gimme Shelter. You can't always get what you want. Country Honk. I mean, uh, I love this album. Great, great record from the Stones. Definitely one of their greatest records. A little better than Hackney Diamonds. Hackney Diamonds is right up there with it, though. It's, you know, according to you guys, it's best Rolling Stones album ever. Okay. 
Uh, that was number 10. Number nine, number nine, number nine. This album was so different when it came out and so good. Chicago Transit Authority. What a great freaking record this is. One of the, it's a top 10 album of all time, really. Fantastic record. Uh, just mind blowing when it came out. That whole start with the introduction, the, oh man, I mean, and Terry Cass, great playing, and South Carolina. California Purples and uh, I'm a Man and everybody you know what time. Oh, just dripping with incredible music. Okay. Number eight on the list would be the band. My favorite band album. What a great record this is. Oh my God. Across the Great Divide. Rag Mama Rag. The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down. When You Awake, Up on Cripple Creek, my favorite band song, Rockin' Chair. Love that tune. Wow, great, great record. The Brown Album, the band. Number seven on the list. One of my favorite bands of all time, Jefferson Airplane, Volunteers. Wow. I remember having to play this in the house when I was 16, and they do that song, Up Against the Wall, Mother Effers, and my parents, and going oh i hope they don't hear that they make, won't let me play it you know it was uh uh the effort wasn't so common back then for the parents you know my dad never used it in front of my mom or me but i'm sure he with his friends was quite liberal uh anyway volunteers my second favorite jefferson airplane album after surrealistic pillow number six would be Love this album from the first time I heard it. Procol Harum, A Salty Dog. Just a beautiful album. The song, A Salty Dog, is just incredible. Uh, wow. What a band. Gary Brooker, what a voice. One of the great vocalists of all time. Um, Devil Came Down from Kansas is on this too. Fantastic record. Number five, the top five. This probably wouldn't make anybody else's list, but I have loved this album from the first moment it came out. The third Deep Purple album from Mark One, Deep Purple's lineup with Rod Evans, Deep Purple with the Hieronymus Bosch cover. Um, the song April's incredible. I mean, these guys were like a prog rock band back then. But Chasing Shadows is on here. Um, the Painter, I think, is on here. No, that's on another album. Why Didn't Rosemary, This Bird Has Flown, April, 12 minutes and 20 seconds of brilliance. Yeah, The Painter is on here. Great song, too. This is a fantastic, fantastic record. Just really always meant a lot to me, and I still love it. Okay. That was number five. Number four, got to be Hot Rats. I wasn't into it back in 69, but, I mean, it's a masterpiece. Frank's masterpiece. Incredible music. Absolutely love this album. This is a reissue on pink vinyl. Uh, jazz fusion, some crazy rock stuff. Uh, Frank's great solo on Willie the Pimp. Uh, Peaches and Regalia, arguably Frank's best song. And uh, what can you say? Number four, Hot Rats. Number three, the first Zeppelin album. Man, I bought this because of the cover. I didn't know who Led Zeppelin was. I saw the front cover and went, wow. I turned over the back cover and saw these cool-looking dudes and went, oh, my God, this has got to be incredible. Brought it home. In the days of... Oh, man. The best. Man, I don't know if there's ever been an album released that I bought and came home and put on from the first note. Just my whole head exploded off my body. Zeppelin, number three. Number two and number one are 1A and 1B or tied for number one. I really don't know how to distinguish this. I don't even want to pick. They both are just incredible. Of course, Abbey Road. What can you say about this? I still remember 
not knowing this album was coming out. I don't know if uh, there was any advanced publicity or not. Not that I'm aware of. I walk over to, on like on a Tuesday night or something, I walk over to the local mall, and we had a, a department store called Simpsons, and they had a record department. I would just go over there and look at the records. I didn't have a pot to piss in. I walk in there, and, and I see this, a new Beatles album. I turn around, I run home, 10-minute run. <laughs> Dad, please, can you give me the three ninety nine or two ninety nine or four ninety nine, whatever it was at the time? Please, I beg you, please. He, my dad gave me the money, ran back to the store, picked it up, came home, and get dun, 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 come together. Oh, wow. Just amazing. The other one, In the Court of the Crimson King, my favorite album cover of all time. Uh, a life-changing album, uh, the father of progressive rock, putting the needle down for the first time and hearing in the Court of the Crimson King. I remember being at my cottage and my buddy across the road had a friend, Pete Horning, I still remember his name. He had a Mustang and he had a, I don't know it was an eight track or cassette, whatever he had in his car. And he had the best one you could find and the biggest speakers you could get. And sitting in his car, Puffin' Dubes, listening to this at just the loudest volume you could possibly listen. The, the, the whole cottage area must have been ready to call the cops on us. It was, uh, wow. Amazing album. Still to this day, King Crimson, one of my favorite bands. That's 1969 for me, so uh, I know I left a ton of good stuff off the list. Let me know what you think. And thanks for watching this series. I really appreciate it very much. And uh, we will be back soon. Some thumbs. Thumbs. Please. You got two. Give me one. Thanks.